guys welcome back to my channel so today's video uh i want to just say one thing about this video before i start i understand that a lot of people are going to argue with me in the comments as many people have in the past about this topic um and i would just like to present you with one thought before you go into this whole it was legal thing just because something is legal does not mean it is ethical because ethics and legality are not the same. So let's say, for instance, a girl 17 years old has sex with a man who is 37 years old and a rock star and this young girl is a fan. Yes, in New York City, that would be considered legal. It's unethical for a man of such power and that's that this young girl idolizes to take advantage of his fame and his power and use that to gain sexual acts from the 17 year old girl that's one number two a teen is still a teen 17 18 19 is still a teenager and a teenager is not on the same page as a grown man in a rock band okay like cheating cheating on your wife it's not illegal but it's not ethical there are things that are considered legal that are not ethical. So if you're going to come at me with that argument, I would just turn off the video now because we're going to be talking about a lot of things that maybe were considered in some crazy way legal, but it's just wrong. Another thing I would like to say is that this has been a problem since uh, in all times, okay? I understand that rock stars have groupies. I understand this has gone on forever, It's all, especially in... The genre of rock and alternative music it's always been like these crazy young fans you know flashing them the rock stars and they take them on the tour bus and do the whole thing i understand that but what's in common with these bands that i'm going to talk about today is a little different than ozzy osbourne okay because ozzy osbourne's music was not projected at 13 year old girls most of the bands that i'm going to talk about today including attila a day to remember Pierce the Veil, um, Of Mice and Men, Panic at the Disco, for God's sake. Um, all, all of these bands, they're targeted at teens the ages of like 12. So that's, a, that's not even a teen, that's a tween to like 16, 17 years old, okay? That's that's the first thing. It's like uh, uh, Ozzy Osbourne's music, uh, Guns N' Roses, Pink Floyd, their music wasn't targeted at young girls. That's not, that, that wasn't the main people that listen to them. Honestly, I don't know many grown men that walk around listening to Pierce the Veil. This is the truth. Like, I'm sure that there are people who like actually grew up on it when they were younger that still listen to it, but I don't, it's not something that grown men listen to. Like men of their age group, of their age bracket, like the most of them don't really listen to that. The Vans Warp Tour was an entire music festival dedicated to all these types of bands and Warp Tour was shut down. And Warp Tour was like most likely shut down because it was a cesspool. And that's the truth. Because the amount of band members that like waited for Warp Tour dates to have sex with specific young girls is disgusting. And we're gonna get into all this right now. Let's dive into this topic. And I know you guys already know the answer to the question, but what do these bands really have in common? And let me tell you, I adored him. He was my favorite singer, my favorite musician. He helped me get through when I was 13 and I was raped. He helped me get through when I was 15 and I was in an abusive relationship. He helped me get through so much shit with his music. So I looked up to him so much. And so even when he did these worst things possible, I kept seeing that man that helped me. And he knew I was 20 years old and he was 32 or 31, he's 33 now, or whatever. He knew that there was a huge power dynamic. He had so much power over me. That was a clip from Taylor Nicole Dean. And although she did not start dating musician Johnny Craig until she was a consenting adult, I think what she said in that video when referring to her crazy and abusive ex-boyfriend is a very powerful statement. And that's something that we're gonna talk about in this entire video is the concept of a power dynamic. So it may not always be that this girl is 10 years old and this man is 30 years old. Sometimes it's 17, 18, even 19 years old, even though a lot of these stories are 
primarily 16, 17. Obviously, you know, the power dynamic there is very inappropriate because this person is idolizing someone that's going to exploit them for sex, basically, and it's happened time and time and time and time again. And most bands and most artists that are accused of sexual allegations, they respond something similar to this. Up, this is Franz, and as you know, there's always two sides to every story. So here's my side. First things first, I am not a pedophile. I have zero desire to hook up with anyone underage. or this. So hello everyone. Um, I wanted to make a video message and go ahead and direct all of the false uh, accusations that are made against me about Pearl. It seems like most men who are accused of sexual allegations, especially these band members, um, have a very hard time taking accountability. The first band I wanna talk about today is the one and only Blood on the Dance Floor, which if you're following me, you're probably pro following me for pedophilia um, reasons like the Nathan case I did. And um, you probably know about Davi and um, I'm not even gonna go too into detail because I will link a million videos that you could watch. So much proof, so many, just so many people have covered that and done amazing jobs. And um, it's not even up for debate that this man was not only a pedophile and a predator, but he was in fact a full-blown rapist and he um, attacked his victims the same way. And it's over 21 girls, well over 21 girls. No one even knows the exact number. Um, people still come out every single day talking about Davi and he is still not in jail. He's still able to do music, I think. And I think I saw um, Pastel Bell tweeted before his merch was like advertised on YouTube um, that's alarming. Blood on the Dance Floor emerged in like the early 2000s, closer to like 2008, 2009. Um, the first time I heard about it was really 2010. And even back then, um, I was only like 11, 12 years old and I knew like of girls my age that talked to Davi all the, all the time. He would hook up with girls on MySpace and talk to them and, uh, he'd meet up with them, he'd take advantage of them. One girl was 11 years old. Um, Needless to say, that was his thing, is these girls were his fans. And just so you know, this is the entire story with basically every single band I'm gonna talk about. Fan loves, idolizes, thinks is cool, looks up to. Fan is most likely a child. And then the rock star, the, the rock star Davi takes advantage of these young girls and exploits them for his sexual needs. Um, that's first and foremost. But there are plenty others besides Davi. Davi is like by far um, the most disturbing case because of the amount of girls that have came forward and how the story is so repetitive. And just he is a vile person that actually deserves to be in, in jail forever. Not every single one of these stories warrants the man being in jail as some of them are even just picture exchanges, but it's all about the manipulation used from, again, this power dynamic and how the victims of these men are left feeling so used, betrayed, and can't even listen to this band anymore that they so, like, that they loved. Like, you know, obviously a lot of these girls, they do things because they literally just idolize the person that they're talking to. Pierce the Veil. Now, Pierce the Veil was formed in 2007. Pierce the Veil is another one of these bands in this music genre and this alternative rock um, emo scene, if you will. Now, I didn't even know this one until I started to do this entire video because a lot of these allegations or these cases are swept under the rug. They're covered a little bit, they're talked about a little bit, they're mainly talked about on Twitter, and then it's just swept under the rug. And like, honestly, if you're not really looking for that, you're not gonna find it because it's just not something that people talk about a lot. I was a very big fan of a lot of these bands. Never blood on the dance floor, happy to say, but Pierce the Veil, definitely. I've seen them in concert a couple times and um, I was actually shocked. But now looking back, I'm really not so shocked because it's like, again, all these bands targeting 13 year old girls. I, I don't really know why I thought any different. A girl named Shannon on Twitter tweeted this. So glad these grimy band dudes are finally getting what they deserve. Mike Fuentes used to be a total creep to me when I was 14, 15 would hold my hand, ask me to date him, would ask 
me to send pics, etc. So when she said this, another person writes proof or I don't believe it. And that's a lot of the mentality that a lot of people have. And I do understand it in a way um, because I'm sure that there are girls who make false allegations, I guess. But for me, solely, I, I believe people when they say these kinds of things because it takes a lot of strength. And you would think that like a lot of people have this mentality that when you speak out against this kind of thing, that you're automatically going to get clout and like um, everyone's going to praise you and be there for you. But that's really not the case because a lot of people um, don't believe you. And a lot of people don't want to believe you because people like the music, people like the band, the artist, and they say, well, no, I don't believe you unless there's proof. Um, so Shani, the girl on Twitter, writes back, you genuinely think I have proof from nine years ago? And then Layla, whatever the hell her name is, said they weren't even popular nine years ago, which is not true because she responded with this picture, which that was a long time ago, hon. They did not come out in like 2012, just so you know. In an article written by Loudwire, she did a little bit of an interview and Bray told Loudwire that she met Fuentes in 2008. I went to Warp Tour and met Mike at their signing. I said, oh my God, I'm a big fan. He's like, cool, are you doing anything today? Do you want to hang out? Which is extremely weird. I remember ditching my friends, um, holding his hand, walking around Warp Tour. I was 14. That just doesn't, you don't just hold a 14's hand and walk around and it not be looked at as weird. And at places like Warp Tour, which I mentioned before, that was like fine like all these grown men were having sex with girls as young as like 11 12 13 14 years old and that was totally okay this man this grown man was walking around holding the hand of a 14 year old and nobody thought that was weird that's that that's why there's no more warp tour and i'm happy about it honestly we parted ways and he said let me get your number so we texted for a while he said things like i was too nervous to kiss you but next time i will he never kissed me or anything. The furthest he went is holding my hand. We hung out until I was 15. Still never doing anything other than holding hands. I remember him texting me, I have a question for you. Will you date me? You should send me pics. I specifically remember not knowing what he meant. So I sent him a picture of me smiling. And then he said, no, not that kind of pic. And then I didn't respond. Our relationship fizzled out and we didn't talk much after that. And that is extremely unfortunate. And just because that does not deserve jail time, because obviously the situation, he did not rape anyone and is not even in a, a comparison to Davi. But the point of the matter is, this is a grown man trying to get something from a young girl. She said no. So he didn't pursue it further. But that girl is not going to listen to that music anymore. Look, she came out years later and is like upset because... It's taking a part away of her childhood because she didn't want to hang out with Mike because she wanted to go have sex with him. She wanted to just hang out with someone that she idolized, that she very much respected, and they're looking for one thing. And it makes you feel used, worthless, and like a sexual object at that point. And it is, it is disgusting. Another user on Twitter came out and talked about Mike. Um, her name was Punk Doll on Twitter. She had a receipts of a explicit photo of him that people were like, oh, that could be photoshopped, whatever. When I was 15 years old, I started speaking to Mike Fuentes of Pierce the Veil. We had met on MySpace. At first, it was very friendly. The conversations were normal at first. I was only a couple weeks away from turning 16. I had not told him of my age at this time. I, as nothing wrong had happened yet, we hadn't even met. I saw no harm as I was just thinking him of a cute guy I was talking to. Sometimes girls don't say their age at first or their lie because um they want to talk to them or they think that they want to talk to these men and it's like i've seen so many people blame the victim like why did you lie about your age why did whatever um they're kids they're kids that idolize a rock star and at the end of the day i don't think that rock stars should be talking to fans anyways especially when they look so young like these grown men should have some common sense and we should stop trying to blame it on the girls that are obviously fans Mike and I continued talking, and right after I had turned 16, he invited me to go into a show at Chain Reaction, in which his brother Vic was f filling in on a guitar for Cinematic Sunrise. When I got there, I was just a f I was just with a friend of mine, and we just turned 16 as well. When Mike met us in the parking lot, right after getting to the show, we were making out. Not too long after this, I was going to every PTV show. I would text him between days, and he would talk about how badly he wanted me. Even though we haven't even had sex at this point, I was young, and he had spent so long trying to make me feel I was special. A few months after I turned 16, I was already 16 the first time we met in real life. An ex-friend of mine messaged Mike informing him of my age. He then sent me a message asking if it was true. I told him yes, it was, and I was sorry I didn't tell him. He responded with a message I'll never forget. Ha ha, I don't care, babe. I just thought it was funny she tried to message me about that, so we carried on as per usual. The first time we ever had sex was at Warp Tour. Warp Tour in 2008. Keep in mind, Mike was born in 1984. I was born in 1992. He knew how old I was at this point. I won't speak for the rest of his band because I, I don't know if it ever got brought up regardless of the amount of times I hung out with him. I'm going to link all of the full articles underneath here so you could look yourself because a lot of these allegations and these stories that these girls came out and said are very lengthy 
and they deserve to be paid attention to and, and read in full. But right now I'm not going to take too much time on every single case because I just want to point out the pattern that is in this scene of music and has been going on for such a long time. My heart goes out to every single girl that's had the courage to come out and speak about someone that is in, has so much more power than them, so much more fame, a whole fan base. And it's just amazing. And I, I stand with every single one of you. I will speak for you. I will be your voice. I understand what it's like to be used by somebody that you very much idolize. And I understand how hard it is to come out and say their name and to put yourself out there like that because there are so many people that react so negatively and tell you that it didn't happen. And these men don't even own up to it. And it's like, you know it happened. And it's just, it's a very hard thing to do. So seriously. But Mike from Pierce the Veil, 16 years old, having sex with girls at Warp Tour. Doesn't surprise me. Let's move on to our next band, Black Veil Brides. Now, this was a very big one with a very crazy fan base, much like Blood on the Dance Floor, because believe it or not, to this day, people still support Davi. Seriously, like they support him and think that everyone is lying. Over 21 girls, they're all lying. They were another band in this scene. Ashley Purdy from Black Veil Brides was accused by two girls on Twitter of sexual misconduct and interacting with minors and he was just a real piece of shit. So the first girl that came out, her name was Pearl and she came out with a very lengthy story about what happened very in detail. And he, um, that, that first clip that I posted of Ashley was him responding to Pearl's accusations. Now Pearl had a lot of proof. She had text messages. She had an entire story that made perfect sense. And she had screenshots and people still to this day say that she was not telling the truth. She said that she was drugged. She said that she was taken advantage of. And she came out with this very lengthy story that again, I will link all of the, the, the full story below. Um, one thing I'm going to highlight about her statement that is very important was that when she said all of this, he immediately came out with a post saying, anyone ever deal with this scenario? Have you ever tried to help someone that it basically backfires on you? Um, he's just talking about how he's pretty much the victim. And she responds to that. He's lying to all of you. He made this post and it disgusts me. And it just said watching someone fight for like someone to believe them. He came on to me and had unprotected sex while I was extremely intoxicated and not even in my body. He came inside me that night and I barely remembered what happened the next morning. It seems really suspicious and odd because two days before I went to visit him, he asked me what medication I was on and if it affected pregnancy. I told him no and he said good to know. And here is the screenshot of proof of that. And people still have the audacity to tell this girl that it did not happen. And I would not... There are so many statements that this poor girl put out and so many people still don't believe her. And he, uh, again, made statements denying the allegations. Then after Pearl came out about Ashley, another girl named Rose that I actually had the chance of talking to came out and talked about him as well. One thing that stood out to me when I spoke to Rose was the fact that she is upset when people like, like people actually try to like argue with her and say like, like try to catch her in lies of the story and to do that to a victim is just so disgusting. She sent him a video that she recorded at his concert. He sent back a heart, she sent back heart eyes and he said, what city are you? She posted this on her spam account and then they started to talk more. They FaceTime. The uh, conversations obviously got sexual because um, that's the only reason these men even interact with their fans at this point. Rose went to a BVB show and she was had VIP, she went on the tour bus. Here is part of her statement. To get on the tour bus, I had to cover my face with a jacket to shield myself from the fans who were already lined up outside and waiting. Just to clarify, this time I was drunk. As soon as I got to the bus, some other band members, can't remember exactly who, so I won't speculate, were sitting down relaxing. Ashley started showing me off to them and asked me to do a spin for them and told them to guess my ethnicity based on my body. This little show off didn't last long as he hired me to the back of the bus and as soon as he closed the door, he decided to get down to business. He didn't use a condom and didn't even ask me if I wanted to use one. I don't remember a lot during the intercourse. All I remember is when he finished, he asked me if I was on birth control and I said no. After he was done, he told me it was time for me to go because he had things to do and places to go. I texted my friends to come get me. I'd been dropped off and picked up by a friend and asked him to record me getting off the bus. This girl literally has video footage of her getting off the bus okay and still to this day people are telling her that it's not real and rose even said that within her time of speaking to ashley he went as far as to tell her to get plastic surgery to make her look more like instagram models such as this one this is literally what he sent her which is disgusting not only did you take advantage of your young and impressionable fan when you intoxicated them but you also tried to degrade them by comparing them to other women 
and telling them to get plastic surgery so that they can be better for you. Well, um, I don't know who's still a fan of this man, but next. I really do love Panic at the Disco, but uh, Kenneth Harris needs to be called out. So here's a thread about my experience with him. On April 20th, 2016, this was my first day I ever snapped Kenny. I sent him a picture of me with a stupid dog filter, thinking he wouldn't even reply, but boy, he did. He went on about how cute I was, and he asked me to send more selfies, which I obviously did. He sent a few back. Fast forward a week later, my friend and I had tickets to see Panic Live on July 8th, fifth row from stage. I snapped Kenny and asked him if he could throw me a guitar pic since we were so close to the stage. He agreed, but said only if I sent him a pic, winky face, first. Me being a dumb 16 year old that I was at the time, asked what kind of pic, hoping he just wanted another selfie. He replies back, surprise me. So my dumb ass 16 year old self decided to play along and go, if I send you a picture, you'll forget about me by the time I go to the concert in July. To which he replies, well, if you keep sending them, I won't. So I ended up agreeing, but always put it off whenever he'd ask. I wasn't actually going to send him anything. There's no way. Not ethical at all. Like you don't, you don't say like, oh, I'll give you a guitar pick, something you want as a fan if you send me naked pictures. Um, Panic at the Disco did let go of Kenneth Harris. Thankfully, they did the right thing. They didn't just sweep it under the rug. They heard about the allegations and they got rid of him, which is actually um, commendable because a lot of people don't um, really do that. Brian McClure from Attila. Not only did Brian's girlfriend come out and say how abusive he was, but a girl at the age of 16 wrote this statement on Twitter about Brian, who was the drummer of Attila. Back in 2007, I met Attila. I was 16. I began talking to Brian. Attila was one of my favorite bands, and I was just ecstatic to have someone I admired give me attention. I was 17 when he first asked me for nudes. I heard allegations about Franz, and I know how manipulative the band is. They have no regard for the age or sobriety when it comes to women consenting. Below, I posted screenshots. Last time I called out Brian was for making ableist comments on my Snapchat, and I was immediately shut down. Manipulated by this grown man for naked pictures. A very repetitive habits that most of these men in bands have. Maybe they just shouldn't be allowed to have social media if they can't stop themselves from asking for naked pictures from minors. He goes on to say that Brian getting fired from Attila made me feel relieved and heard, but it's a greedy to feel that that isn't enough. My entire high school life is ripped away. I was a sex toy as a child for an older man and I feel so empty. I don't know, maybe I'm selfish, but I can't stop thinking about it. And that's a completely normal reaction and feeling to feel after you've been used by someone that you idolize so much because it's like these bands where like a lot of these girls, including me, their life, someone they looked up to. The music isn't like regular rock music. It was like music about like being a certain type of way and like it was so relatable and it was literally made for like 15, 16, even as young as like 12, 13 year old girls going through a hard time. So to feel like these people like got you through your hardest times just for them to just look at you as nothing more than like a sexual object is extremely traumatizing. So my heart goes out to this girl as well. And um, it is good that they got rid of Brian, but Franz, as I featured in the beginning of the video, that also has sexual allegations against him, um, is still in the band. And it's not a surprise. Nothing's done to most of these men. The guitarist Stephen Klein in Newfound Glory. He was accused of sexual misconduct with minors. There was a statement released on Alternative Press from Klein's legal representative, and this is what it said. It is difficult to defend oneself in the media where there's a pending criminal case. This is because people are quick to assume that if a person is charged with a crime, they are also guilty. And it is especially difficult because a criminal defense attorney insists that the client not talk about the case to ensure the constitutional rights are protected. Furthermore, attorneys are limited by law as to what can and cannot be said about a case to the public. Number one, Stephen Klein is not accused of having any lewd, any actual physical contact with a minor. So in all these like defenses of these men, they're always like, it's just pictures, like relax, no one got raped. You don't have to rape somebody. You, It's not just rape that like psychologically affects a girl being used by a man for sex. Like we have smartphones and there's a thing called nudes. And yeah, you're not physically touching anybody. But uh, like I know in my case that I talked about, um, I wasn't, didn't have sex with the man, but like I knew he was just, sexualizing me he only wanted me for his own sexual pleasure but we just didn't live close enough where he could like have sex with me but if he was going to take advantage of me he definitely would so it doesn't really take away from how fucked up it is um you're just saying like well at least he didn't rape her like it's just such a bad excuse all charges against steve are derived solely from online consensual video chats between steve and some female strangers he met on an adult website which is a lie and he said it says that they believe that the females are over 18 the females alleged to be minors. They literally were like 14. Minors in this case are not known females. This means that no one, not the prosecution, not the police, not the defense actually know who the females are and no one knows their true age. The possession of child pornography charge is based on Steve allegedly possessing videos of chats with female strangers on the adult website. 
Okay. Well, the outcome was... Formerly of the band New Found Glory is charged with five counts of lewd sex acts on a child, as well as one count of contact with intent to commit a sex offense and possession of child pornography. After his ex-wife, his ex-wife discovered the sexual two-way chat room videos on an external hard drive, okay? It wasn't even these girls coming out. It was the ex-wife who found him talking to underage girls. And people really have the audacity to get on here and give a whole defense. And that's just a perfect example of what happens all the time because people constantly defend and defend and come out with these statements. I want to deny these allegations. It never happened. It never happened. But it did. And it, you know, most of the time, it, it did happen. Like, I haven't seen not one of these be debunked and this man actually was charged with child pornography and you were so confidently saying that they were from an adult site like his wife found it like how are you even defending him at the end of the day every single story deserves to be heard and nobody should be taken advantage of by people that they look up to and by seeing how many girls have really had the strength and the courage to come out and single themselves out by putting out things that not everyone's going to agree with that not everybody wants to hear and really saying the truth and sharing their stories like i i'm so moved by it all the bands in this scene they really need to be reevaluated they really need to think about their morals and why they make the music that they do and they need to be way more professional as artists when they are dealing with such young girls and i think it's a problem that not enough people are talking about so thank you for taking the time to go through all of these bands that were just extremely inappropriate. It's extremely hard, I know, sometimes to sort out what's the truth or what's not, but think about this. If a girl's really coming out and saying their story and actually have proof too, like with Ashley, and a lot of these, if you go through the links and look at the girls speaking about it with their screenshots and their timelines, um, it's really hard for them. So please be gentle with people trying to speak about their trauma because it's so rude to hear like it that didn't happen show me proof this that and the third like it takes a lot for someone to come out and say that so take it you know take it seriously and if you're a young girl in a similar situation right now and there's an artist or a band member that you really like trying to talk to you please know your worth and please remember all these stories and all these cases and think about what they're using you for what they're asking you for a man who wants to do right by you and a man that you want to look up to would probably not even be talking to you because of your age. No grown man has anything really to do with a teenager. They shouldn't have anything in common and they definitely shouldn't be asking you for nudes. It's not a friendship, that's not a healthy relationship and you are worth so much more than that. We need to de-platform predators and it starts here, especially in this music genre. And not a lot of people are talking about it, but it's a serious problem. All of these allegations are not just to be taken lightly and the fact that it's all in the same music genre that's targeted such young girls should be a very big red flag and i really think that we need to do something about it so thank you for watching let me know what you guys think about this topic because i would like to go more in detail about specific cases and i could even make a series because there are more bands that i didn't even list and here's just a small list of them um that's a lot that's not even a small list Thanks so much for taking the time to watch and I will see you guys next time.